in both the Old Testament reading and and the New Testament reading, uh, Moses is on the mountaintop, and who does he have an encounter with? God. And in the New Testament reading, we see Jesus on the mountaintop, and he's transfigured. It's really seen as an epiphany, an appearance of the divine. Jesus is it radiates glory on the mountaintop. Mountaintops are really a special place in this uh, when we're on the mountaintop, if you look at that view on the cover of the bulletin, it really changes our perspective. If we spend time there, at some level it impresses upon me at least uh, my insignificance in the grand drama of life. And so many of my issues and problems suddenly become uh, so much uh, what should I call it? They hold. The, they don't hold me as captive. There's a certain freedom when we're on the mountaintop. It's a peaceful place to be. Of course, then you have to go down, and deal with it. But it's a peaceful place, and it, it gets us in touch with, I think, the glory of God. We face a season coming up in Lent, and our theme in Lent is getting to the mountaintop. One of the aspects of this story that startled me, and I've been reading it for 40 years, and I've never paid attention to this, Jesus is transfigured on top of the mountain, the glory of God shines through him, but he had to climb that mountain. Moses encounters God on top of Mount Sinai where he receives the Jewish law, but he had to climb that mountain. So there's this linkage here, which is climb the mountain and experience the glory of God on the mountaintop. But we have to climb the mountain. So my question to you all is, what are the mountains that you need to climb? And then I need to climb. Such that when we are on the mountaintop, the glory of God shines through us. And we all have our mountains to be climbed. My next invitation is, can we use this Lenten period, which is a time of really an intensification of our spiritual walk with Christ, can we use this Lenten period as a time where step by step we climb that mountain? Such that when Easter comes, the glory of God, the victory, shines through you and it shines through me. It's either the victory that shines through us or else it's excuses, one or the other. So what are the mountains that you and I need to climb? The spiritual work that we might do. That the glory of God shines through us. And here's, there's more to this. We're not going to have an Ash Wednesday service because it would be hard for us to get people together. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring everyone together next Sunday. We're going to have what I'm going to call Ash Wednesday service. And the service really impresses upon us the fragility and the, uh, the shortness, the brevity of life. The words are said, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. From ashes you have come to ashes you shall return. Life is short. And then the invitation is recognizing the brevity of life, the shortness, the fragility of life. How might I walk a bit closer to Christ to get to the mountaintop that I face? And my point is that the mountaintop is different for each of us. During the Lent season, I invite you, uh, next, set, next Sunday, you will be invited to right now the mountain that you seek to climb during Lent. A note card, put it in an envelope, seal it up, put your name on it. I'm going to give it back to you on Easter morning. That's the first step for those people who chose to do this. Second step, every Sunday during the Lent season, we're going to have a gathering for the people who choose to do so, uh, probably in the conference room. 
how are you doing in climbing that mountain? Can we encourage one another? Can we build each other up? Can we learn from each other? Can we grow together as brothers and sisters of Christ? And the other aspect of that is, if I am potentially tempted uh, to take it easy and I climb up the mountain, you know, I'm going to be getting together with people on Sunday. Maybe that gathering gives us just an extra little bit of willpower to keep going up the mountain. So what are the mountains that we might climb? Let me share with you some examples. I remember a couple who during the Lenten time period said, we're going to take on a mountain. Our goal during the Lenten time is there will be no TV on during dinner because we want to relate to each other. And then they said, not only is there going to be any TV on, there's not going to be a tablet on the table so that we can research every picky little fact to make sure it's quote-unquote accurate in our conversation. No tablet, no, no, no smartphone. We're just going to relate to one another. That was their mountain. I remember another gentleman who said, what I'm going to do to climb the mountain is every day during the Lent, Lent season, I'm going to write a thank you note to someone to let them know how much I've appreciated our friendship. He said he was going to write to people he worked with. He was going to write to family members to acknowledge those relationships. That was his mountain. I remember another fellow who was in his 80s and he said, you know, I hate to admit this, but in our basement, we've got a uh, treadmill, and it's all dusty. I'm going down into the basement, I'm going to dust it off, and two days a week, I'm going to get on the treadmill. That was the mountain he wanted to climb. Another fellow that I know said, my problem is I sell myself short. I am God's creation, I have gifts. I'm going to begin each morning giving myself three affirmations that I'm going to write down. Things that I'm good at, that I want to own. Because I'm always dismissing my abilities. Those are all mountains that folks wanted to climb. And I remember uh, one woman in particular said, you know, my struggle is I'm addicted to these computers and these smartphones and to video games, and I hate to confess this, but I could spend an hour playing these games every day. I don't want to do that. I'm going to put a limit on it because I've been given the gift of time by God, and I don't want to spend it that way. So the mountain that she wanted to climb was to limit that time that she spent on all this social media and video stuff. And there were ways that she had to do that. What is the mountain for you? It's different for each of us. And it's really important. I'm not going to ask everyone to, to, to figure that out today because I think there needs to be a time of preparation, a little time of preparation to evaluate that. Our inclination is to say, I want to climb Mount Everest. Well, that's a little bit much, isn't it? Maybe we can work on climbing Western Avenue from Main Street up the Western Avenue Hill. That might be more manageable for us. So we have a week to figure this out. What do I want to address? What do I want to work on? What is manageable? What will my temptations be? What will my struggles be? My prayer is that each day we could turn, I began climbing a mountain uh, in December, December 17th I started. Every day I pray, Lord, give me the strength not to get to Easter, but give me the strength for this day, just this day. Help me this day. And that might be our prayer during this Lenten season. Help me this day deal with the mountains that I'm trying to climb to take one more step. So we begin this next week. Everyone will get a note card, an envelope if you feel, like, if you feel called 
to writing it down has a certain psychological power to it. I, I need to mention that. Um, it's very different than just typing it on a computer. Writing it down has a certain psychological power to it. Think about that. What are the mount, what mountain is there? And we all have them. They're, they're different for each one of us. We all have that mountain we're climbing. That's before us. And we know what it is at some level. We know. Right? We all know. So the invitation is to, to really get serious about that during the Lent season, beginning next Sunday. And then remember, uh, next Sunday after church, we'll have that little discussion group for the people who want to share and talk about that. And then we're going we're to keep going. We're going to keep going with those discussion groups every Sunday after church. As we seek to climb the mountain, claim victory on Easter. So when people see us, they see people through whom the glory of God shines, because God has been our help. They don't see excuses. They see people through whom the glory of God shines. That's who we want to be, is the people of Christ. So please contemplate that this week. Jesus was transfigured. The glory of God shone through him on the mountaintop. May it shine through us as we take that journey up the mountain. Thank you for your attention. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.